All right, hello, I'm Coach Danzy. I'm here with uh, Albany High legend, uh, Alander Lulu Lewis, who's going to be inducted to the Albany School District Hall of Fame um, for his, uh, many things, but most uh, especially that many people rem remember is his basketball exploits on the hardwood. Um, let me start with a quick question real quick. Um, you're now, you're living in Virginia. How was your trip up here? How was your drive up or flight? flight oh, no, no, we, we actually drove up, so we, it, it was great. Uh, I'm... The whole time I had my son with me, my wife, and so what's great about it is just being able to share. My wife asked me the question, what, what's exciting about this weekend is just be able to share it with them. So it was a great job, great, great drive up. Okay, good. Now, let me start out with this. Um, the man, Elander Lewis, um, when people hear that name, what should, they, what, should, what should come to their mind? What should they be thinking, um, in your own words, what should they be thinking when they hear that name, Elander Lewis? Um, hard worker, grateful. Humble, um, blessed. Uh, you know, I grew up in this this city with the blessings of so many reaching out, touching me, supporting me, and so uh, blessed really comes to mind. Yeah. Does anybody live on South Pearl Street? Anybody in this live on South? The train still run behind South Pearl Street. There's, well, there's a train track behind there, isn't there? So. When I was a kid, I was 12 years old, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, when I, I lived there right through high school. But I remember, I used to wonder, where does that train go? How do I get on that train and go to some of those places? And it was through hard work. It was through practice. It was through listening to my teachers. It was through believing that I can do anything if I just worked at it. Talk about uh, how you felt when you first got that call that you uh, going to be um, inducted to the uh, Albany School District <laughs> Hall of Fame. I know you had other Hall of Fames you've been a part of already, but this one here is special to so many people. But how did you feel when you got that call? You know what? Uh, you, you and I have had conversations over the years about the tradition of our, our high school program and just how great it is, how many people have come before us. Um, this is more special than I imagined when I got the phone call. Um, I was elated to say the least, but it gives perspective to all the effort that I made and commitments and sacrifice. It's not easy being an Albany High School student. <laughs> and being an Albany High School student athlete, it's even harder, right? right, right? right. So to be honored in this way, uh, to have Mr. Sando nominate me, and then for the selection and executive committee to to move forward with my induction, uh, words can't put in a, uh, be put in the play that describe the feeling, but elated comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. So whether it's in the classroom, whether it's basketball, whether it's music, practice being great at it, it can take you places that you've never, ever imagined. Don't look at your circumstances that you have now, whatever they may be, good, bad, indifferent, not so good. Don't let your circumstances determine your belief in yourself or your dreams. Be more curious about what life has to offer than afraid to take chances. Now, I don't want to keep talking. We can ask, I got questions about basketball, I think from guys or young ladies. Whatever questions you have, I'm willing to answer. I actually will say this. On Friday night, they have the induction. And I'm so honored to be able to say thank you to so many who made a difference. As I became a parent, I'm going to leave you at this and then we can ask questions. As I became a parent, I had to realize that my teachers were like my extended family and my parents. They love you. All right. Now, um, back in your high school days, um, fly, fly, slam a jammer. High, uh, high slam a jammer. High slam a jammer. Okay. Let's get it right. <laughs> high slam a jammer, brother. <laughs> Definitely before my time. Yes, it but was. Te but tell me, explain what that was and who specifically was a part of that that phrase that was going on. Yeah. There. No. So uh, it was 1985, and uh, Carl Richardson, uh, Brian Hines, Roy Tibbs, and uh, Derek Johnson. Were the start and myself were the starting five, but then we also had coming off the bench uh, uh, Rick Taylor, uh, uh, who was 6'5", jumped out the gym, um, and then um, 
Uh, I'm, Willie Foley was probably not a high slammer, right. but he was a dunker. Right, right. Uh, but we'd have games where we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten dunks in a game. Wow, wow. By five different guys. <laughs> That's amazing. And so it's funny, Bob McNamara yep, I remember uh, coined the phrase. Mm. Oh, high, he slam, did it. high slam a jam. Oh, wow, wow. May you rest in peace. May you um, rest in peace. He had the Bob McNamara, uh, McNamara All Star. The TV 13 All Star. That's, that's exactly right. right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Go that far back. Because you can do anything. I, I, so we talked about the basketball stuff. So I, I, I literally have traveled the world because I played basketball. I've been to Greece, I've been to Germany, I've been to England. I've been to Canada, I've been to Hawaii, I've been to Mexico. I have traveled the world because of basketball. I've played on the best basketball courts in the history of basketball. Madison Square Garden is, they call it the Mecca. The Mecca, meaning it's the, it's the promised land. It's, it's the sacred holy ground of basketball. I played in Pauley Pavilion. You guys don't know what that is, but it's a program called UCLA. You heard of UCLA? Anybody heard of UCLA? They won 10 national championships in 13 years. I played on that court. Your biggest rivalry back then, the Big Ten. Yeah, so, so the Big Ten was tough, obviously. Uh, I mean, you played in the Big yes, Ten, yes. and so Troy High, uh, Bishop McGinnis, CBA, mm -hmm. uh, Catholic Central really was it. People don't yeah. understand for us, um, all those schools I just named yeah. were, were tough. Don't get it twisted for one second. Yeah. Um, but Catholic Central was a mirror image of us, mm. except it was five white guys right, 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 that right, right. could play. And I don't yeah. mean to you know, delineate between yeah, yeah. And, and I love all those guys to this day, Frank McLaren, uh, uh, Alec, uh, Todd Alexanian, Michael Brim, mm. those, uh, Tim Robilotti, th those guys could yeah. flat out play. They, and they had no fear. They'd right. go anywhere. Mm. Uh, that was our biggest and best rivalry from the time we stepped in high school right, right. as ninth graders throughout the, the four years. Okay, okay. Now, uh, what was your biggest rivalry um, outside of the Big Ten? I, I, you know what, uh, obviously, uh, for the we, we played, uh, I think, two of us uh, junior and senior year, Shenandoah. Yeah. Uh, Greg Kubek and Brendan O'Sullivan were great friends of ours. Mm -hmm. We worked out in the summertime, we went to camps together. Yeah. And so, uh, I can remember us going into our sophomore, their sophomore year and our junior year, uh, the talk over the summer had gotten heated. We yeah. just really competed everywhere we went, and yeah. whether it was camp at Five Star, Siena, mm. uh, summer leagues, workouts at St. Rose. Right, right. Uh, so we knew that it was going to come down to us. Like, we knew they had a good team coming in. We knew we had a good team. Yeah. And so Shenanda Hall, by far, brought the best out of us. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Um, that, was, that That's amazing because they still rock to this day. But um, now, Greg Pubek, you mentioned his name. Now, now, both of you guys are the talk of the town, like you said, in the area um, during that time. And not just in the area, but in the state, you know. Um, now, what were, what were those days like competing against them? What were those days actually like? Yeah, no, get in, no. Get in the nooks and Yeah, no, like, so it, it, it's funny because I can go to Greg's house and hang out with him mm. and, and, you know, eat at his house, yeah. be best of friends. But mm -hmm. as soon as we stepped in the lines, mm. All bets were off. Right, right, right. Uh, he wasn't my friend. I wasn't his friend, and we wanted to win. And it it was diving for loose balls. It was getting a rebound. It was giving an elbow. Mm. It was it, it was fair play, hard play. But Kenny, I can't. I, that guy was one of the best competitors I've ever met. And wow. I played. I'm talking about you know some of the greatest places in college basketball mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. against a lot of NBA guys. Yeah. But that guy, hard worker, great competitor. Um, but great friend, yeah, love yeah, him, yeah. Like, like a brother. Right, like, right. It's funny, you, you bring him up. The first camp my kids went to were the Greg Kubat camps. Oh, get out of yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, so they came up to Albany, mm -hmm. and my son Trey will tell you and Miles that they went to the Greg Kubat camp, and it's yeah. the strength of that relationship that was built back yeah. in 1984. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what were some of your uh, fondest memories at Albany High School, outside of sports? Yeah, no, no, that's a great question. Um, so. One stands out in particular. Um, I got a chance to meet Jesse Jackson. Oh. He, he was thinking about a presidential nomination to run, and he was stopping through there. He was in the district, and then he was going to make a speech at, at Albany High. 
uh, the principal calls me down to the office, calls me out of class. You know, anytime that happens, you think, <laughs> well, when I, I walk in, yeah. there's Jesse Jackson. So I got a chance to sit down and have a conversation with him one-on-one, -on -one, thanks to Mr. McGuire, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it was Mr. Bach. I, I can't remember. Yeah, it might have been Bach. Yeah, 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 it yeah. might have been Mr. Bach, mm -hmm. but uh, thanks to them, I was able to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with one of the civil rights leaders of, yeah, yeah. of the history of right. civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was one. And, and I think, I think the other one was, um, when I think about the diversity of my, my experience at Albany High. Mm -hmm. Like I had friends that were white, black, that were played in the band, that didn't play sports. Yeah. And so having such a diverse group of friends there I, that are still friends with me to this day. Yeah, like, right. so it's funny, you know, I think about this uh, one, one particular friend, our kids know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, my son, Trey and I just went to, Rachel McMillan was a, in, in a uh, trigonometry class of mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still friends and support one another. In fact, she'll be at She'll be at um, the induction ceremonies on mm. Friday. Mm, mm. So, the diversity of my friendships. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Also, you you know you come from a uh, obviously a, um, a basketball family. You know your sister's yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the battles you might have had with her growing up? I mean, she she what a year younger, two years. She's younger? two years younger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's funny as, as she was younger, the, the, the battle the battle was really trying to get her to go work out. Mm. Um, and and once she took to it. Uh, the battle became, I'm better than you, mm. right? So by the time she's graduating high school, she's, I scored a thousand plus points. She scored 1,200 or 1,300 points yeah, in her right. career. So yeah. she's feeling pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I remember as, as a sophomore, or excuse me, as a junior, I go see her play at Rutgers and she does a 360, they're playing Tennessee mm. at Rutgers. She does a 360 layup finger roll. It's wow. a reverse 360. <laughs> at that, and I, and I and I go, I probably won't play her anymore this summer, <laughs> right, right? Right, right. I just didn't want to take the, yeah. I, I couldn't take an L to my little no, sister, no, 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 right, 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 right. <laughs> but uh, the battles were competitive, and it made us both better, right, right, right. Uh, it made me better, uh, made me appreciate who she was, love mm -hmm. who she, what she was doing, um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I certainly, I'd like to believe I had some influence on, on her career. Right, 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 right. The first lady that I ever saw win a dunk contest went to toast. She's in the record books at Rutgers University, one of the best women's programs in the history of college basketball. She didn't like basketball at all. She didn't have the courage to come up like you did, or like you did, or like you did. She's also in the Hall of Fame. She happens to be my little sister. She happens to be my little sister, and she's not so little. But my point to you is I so show respect and admire the courage that you had. And I'm telling you, you're way better than she was. And she, she was the first woman. And I, I'm not saying she won a dunk contest with women. She won the dunk contest with men in the dunk contest. Right? So I applaud you for coming up with great courage. You, I mean, you know, you know, Tanya. Um. You don't have to talk about this. this is, I'm gonna bring it back to your, your early um, rearings. Um, you can go into it as much as you can or, or, or not. Um, and you talked about the you know, issue with your, um, with your uh, father um, moving on with our kids here today when we had you here speaking to the kids. Um, is there something that, you, is there anything you can share um, uh, about that you want to know, that you want people to know or something that you want to keep for yourself? I mean, it's, it's, no, it's, no, you know what, so, it, 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 you know, all things happen for a reason. The question is, can we understand how to take those things to either impact us in a positive way or, or be a blessing to somebody else? Right. Yeah. Uh, my father's life was um, very much rooted in anger. He didn't have his father in his life the way he wanted to. And everything he did uh, was out of anger. And as a result, he ended up actually murdering a man. Mm. Shot a man, uh, murdered him got in a shootout with a police officer, mm. uh, and then got murdered himself. Mm. Um, as a father, what I look back on is, it's my kids that prevent me from doing a lot of things. Right, right, right. And they keep me doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I often wonder how, how mad and how angry could that man have been not to ever think about the, 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 the 10 kids that he had, that he would waste his life. And so I've spent my life trying to learn from that lesson of putting anger in a different space and not letting it drive or, or create a destruction with me and then more importantly 
knowing better how to love my sons so that they can love their children a, l a little differently than my father loved me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't wish that on anyone to grow up, and many of us in this community and in, in Albany have grown up without fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't wish it on, looking back, I don't wish it on anybody. Yeah. The one thing I always say to my sons, what is it like to be you? <laughs> right. I never, I've never known my father. My whole life will be spent wondering what my father would say. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm eight mm -hmm. when I lose him. The rest of my life, what would my father say? Mm. I don't know. Ooh, thank you for that. that yeah. Now, um, also, you talked about to the kids you had a particular teacher that um, helped guide you when you got the toast. And yeah. That, 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 was, that, that was amazing um, um, how she affected you so much in such a positive way. It's unfortunate we don't have 18 no more in our, in our school. Yeah. That, that, that's very unfortunate. I hope they bring that back some type of way. But um, can you talk more about this lady? And can you talk about also about some of the people, your mentors you might have had before I forget, like, you know, um, we talked about Al Meadows yeah, and yeah, some people yeah. like that. But go ahead. Well, so, you know, first of all, Kenny, I'm, I'm truly like the kid that was raised by the village, mm. right? So, you know, uh, Miss Haith, strong black woman who didn't accept anything ex except my best. Right. She didn't accept anything except my best. Mm -hmm. uh, and so her, her belief that I could be better every day, that I could do something other than what I was doing was the foundation of, to start making, believe, making me believe that I can change my life. Again, I'm, I'm at that time two years removed from the murder of my father. I don't care about anything. Right, right, right. I started caring about myself again. Mm -hmm. uh, then I started caring about the things that I did. Then I started believing I could do other things that I hadn't yeah, done. Right, right. Um, and it all happened in a short span. It, it was amazing to watch her do this from, I think I told the story to the kids, I was actually in somebody else's class the first month. Mm. So she did it all from October, not September, from right. October to June. Right, right. By the time I got out of her class in June, I had taken up the, the trombone. I was pretty good at it. Uh, but I had all these other interests and this confidence about myself mm. that hadn't existed. And every time I did something well, the positive reinforcements that came from that wanted me to do even better. Right, right, right. And then that brought out others within the community to try to help me. I think about a guy named Dan McCullough, mm. white guy that nobody would know, right? Mm -hmm. But Dan McCullough held me to a level of accountability about doing the right thing for no other reason than because it's the right thing. <laughs> right, right. When right. nobody's watching. Yeah. I think about Harry Sanford. Mm. I think about Ronnie Tanksley. Um, I think about guys like Charles Robinson. Mm. Charles Robinson took me at 14 years old to New York City to play basketball. And I didn't understand the doors he were opening for me at the time, but he remained a, 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 a somebody I confided in throughout my college years and early years as a, as a man. Mm. Uh, I can go on. I mean, you know, Stanford, uh, Deets. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm laughing because Phil's Blanchard, um, guys like Orville Abrams. Mm. Um, man, look, your Uncle Bobby, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. So here's here's a man that is married to a woman who biologically isn't my but's mom. Mm. But every time I see him at the holidays, as a high school kid, as a college kid, and as a young adult. He's got something to give to me that's rooted in favor of God. Wow. So I, I can tell you about, man, like the, the list will go on and yeah. on, but man, this, this community has, has changed my life. I like the, the one thing that I, that, I, that, I, that I like about what happened to my life was it's not by accident that I live where I live and I'm doing what I'm doing. It's, mm. it's because of the love that I received here. Right, right, um, right. And so to come back to Toast, Bro, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a small portion of what I'm trying to pay back. Right, 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 right. Small portion, but mm. I owe a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're being honest. Right, we're being right, honest. Right. I have never had greater experiences than the experiences I've had with my teachers in elementary school. I went to Hackett Middle School. Hackett Middle School. Then I had a Hackett Middle School or Albany High. Basketball, listen, and, I, I, and I'm going to let you ask questions. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Basketball, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's the arts, whether it's academics. I have a son that's not here. 
He's really, 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 really smart. He's an engineering guy. He's a computer science guy. And because he was really smart and he practiced, he's had a chance to let that gift and, and his practicing of that gift take him to college for free. The one thing I got from your message too is like, and we got to get back to this as a community, is that, the, and we talked about it a lot of times with my friends as well, is the community, village raising the child. Like you don't have to be somebody's parent to see someone doing something good or doing something wrong to correct them or encourage them to keep going on. That's you spot on, brother. You know what I mean? You don't need you don't need to be somebody's parent to do that. Brother, we got to get back to that. Yes, we're yes. losing a whole generation of kids, yeah. of young people, our future, right? Right, right, right. Because we're not doing enough of that. Right. And so um, I'm, I'm honored to be here, and I, I think there's some some conversations I'll have and yeah. um, that I hope have an impact, and I hope I'm part of that solution. I didn't choose athletics over academics. That, hold on, everybody hear a question? That's a great question. So I didn't choose athletics over academics. I was an honor student. I made the honor roll. I graduated with a 3.7 GPA. Athletics were a vehicle for me. My mother could not pay for college. And so all I hoped to do with athletics was to get some financial support. Turned out, I was pretty good at the athletic part. But if I wasn't good academically, guess what? They wouldn't have gave me the scholarship. So no matter what you think, you have to be good in the classroom. Trying to trick me? Hold on. Go ahead, do it. You shooting? That's one. Hey, Trey. All right, that's two. That's two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to make this, right? If you miss this, all I got to do is make one. Now, if you miss it, you got to sit down and you don't, uh, don't worry about it. You know, I'm going to talk to him. I got to talk to him a little bit. Hold on, you going to shoot him? What? So I got to make two, huh? So I get a practice? Do I get a practice? Do I get a practice? One, one practice. All right, that's all I needed. I got three shots. Oh. I gotta make one. Oh. You can play a little bit, can't you? You got to dribble and everything, don't you? You ever work on the game? All right. Uh, thank uh, Alanda Lewis for uh, coming in and, and sharing his thoughts with our uh, fifth and sixth graders. We had some second graders in there as well, but he gave a phenomenal speech. I'm going to try to post that up as well, along with this video. And um, again, I appreciate my all brother. that you do. My brother. And look, and don't let him fool you. He's going to mess with me in about two weeks, say something just to irritate me. To make, yeah, nah, I love this dude, man. Right. He's a good brother, man. Yes, I appreciate it. Look, yeah. real talk, this brother came to Virginia and looked me up, and so we got a chance. He <laughs> spent time right. and 40 to my right. son. I appreciate That's you. Right. I, I appreciate right. you. All right. All right.